This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, we're back. You're in white. It's after Memorial Day, Sebastian Maniscalco, so that's okay. So what's going on with you, bro? What's up? You're, uh, well, how you doing? Just got back from the doctor. Oh, all right, all right. What are we talking? Physical time, right? Nice. See if everything's uh, up in operation. Unfortunately, some sad news coming out of Los Angeles. Uh, one of these uh, very popular OBGYNs had a heart attack, uh, 53 years old, at Will Rogers Park, dropped dead, right? Who? Oh, what? And what? What? What, did, what did I mean? Uh, they, you're uh, telling me about a physical, not someone had a heart attack in the in the, in the park. What? I'm looking. Yeah, it, a big OBGYN out here. What's that? Who's? Uh, it's where you go uh, when you're gonna have a baby. Oh, all right. That doctor. Uh, okay. And he he had a heart attack and died out here, right? A doctor. F- yeah, 53 years old. But never, he was very he was beloved within the community. Dropped dead. And Ray Liotta, 67, dead. Right. I can't even, I can't, well, arguably, I mean, him and Michael Keaton are my favorites, man. So Michael Keaton's I mean, probably hearing this going, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, Liotta died in his sleep, and I want to bring this up to you. It's me too, because I had a combo with Jack about dying in your sleep. Okay, same conversation I probably had with uh, Lana and I had with a few doctors, actually. So when they say die in their sleep, it's not like they're sleeping and then their head just moves and they're dead, right? That, that That's they, the misconception, just, right? Well, I look at it and, again, this is the Pete and Sebastian show here, so nothing we say has any factual uh, merit to it. Usually ends up being true, but very true. What yeah, you but I gotta it make, does have any I gotta, factual merit. <laughs> <laughs> I got to think you die, and there's, like, the person sleeping next to you, whatever, your yeah. wife or whatever, yeah. and then you're, you're in bed, you're like, oh, God, it, right, whatever, and then you die, but you just happen to be in bed, Right? I'll take it one step further. I mean, when they say, I said to Jackie, die alone. In, and again, you know, we're just trying to find a human to, to lessen the blow for yeah, whatever's yeah. coming our way. But when he, they say, like, Leota died in, in his sleep is what they said, right? I take that as, like you said, the perfect thing would be, like, just a little shake and that. But yeah, yeah. is it waking up? Oh, I can't reach my phone. I'm alone. Oh, no. yeah, yeah. You know, phone. yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> you know, so, you know, you were alone in your room with no help. Uh, while in you were bed. Sleeping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big difference. So I, I don't know. Although, uh, whatever it was, you know, it's uh, better than months and months in a hospital, right? So there is that. But yeah, but it, it's <sighs> crazy, bro. I'm trying to come up with another uh, example for dying. Like, if someone was on the floor sleeping, right? Right. Just let's say they were taking a nap on the floor mm-hmm. and they died. Would they go, he died in his sleep on the floor? Or if you're on the floor, all of a sudden it's just assumed you were standing at one point. That's a good question, right? Like, uh, did he die... Would they say he died taking a nap on the floor? Or like if you were in a hammock and you fell asleep and then you and you died, would they say he had a heart attack mowing his lawn, sleeping in the hammock? I don't know. I don't know. I I would like to know what the doctor would say about you know the Leota situation, for example. You know, like was it, yeah, you know, was it a dream and he just never woke up? Because oh man, that's a nice way to I'll go. Pay, I, I, I'll I'll piggyback off your example. If you're sleeping in a hammock and, and you die, when they find you, yeah, you're you're underneath the hammock. Okay. Like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that the hammock's unstable. So I gotta figure if you if you're sleeping and 
and something happens, you're falling out of the hammock, right? You might, you might, you might not. Okay, but maybe. I mean, that, that's jarring. I'm just saying, when you die in your sleep, right? Is it quiet, or is it you die with a struggle and you just have to be? You happen to be sleeping. That's all. That's 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 my question. I don't know. I don't know what constituted, and I don't know. Like, uh, I mean, I feel like I hear these things, and you just feel like you're supposed to live for every moment of every day. But you know, what if I make it to ninety? Then I'm just fucking accidentally nice to everybody because I thought I was gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you know what I'm saying, bro? <laughs> That's too much, yeah. man. The next 40 years, you're walking around living each day till it's fullest because you think you're going to die tomorrow. But like we just talked before the show started, you had a problem with something, you know? And I said, well, yeah. you always find a problem. And you go, yeah, it keeps you living, you know? that's <laughs> that's You're living your life to the fullest by doing that. I'm right that's there with you, you That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. I so, mean, I'm walking around. No, one, no one's bothering me the past couple of weeks. And I'm like... I feel like my, my I'm getting dull. I'm getting, you know what I mean? It's like I need to sharpen my blade. I'm like a Viking, and we're like, what are we going to kill somebody, right? <laughs> oh, God. So I go, I had the, I had this physical yeah. schedule, I don't know, for about two months now. All right. Walk in. <clears throat> they take the blood. It's a, you know, they, they do a blood analysis, take the urine. By the way, wanted to get your take on this. Anytime I gotta do a urine sample, yeah, like I'm pissing left and right over here, right? But I, I, I got, I got a cup in front of me. All of a sudden, it gets scared, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's the whole thing is a little humiliating. You know what I'm saying? It, it, um, yeah, it, it really is. I. Because I'm thinking about leave. the person taking it. I'm like, what are they getting paid for that? I feel like, you know, I almost want to spin the shit myself and tell them what it says because I just don't need any. I feel bad. I mean, I know they're a medic and all, but. I just want to know, and I think we touched on this the last time one of us went on a physical, is when they go in to get the urine from the in the bathroom, because they say just leave it on the shelf in the bathroom. By the way, I'm. I'm sitting there going, I hope nobody else, because my name's on it, right? right yeah. I'm hoping nobody goes in there after me, another patient, and goes, and looks at my urine and goes, what the fuck kind of urine is that? Oh. And they look at and they look at the name, and my, my name's attached to the urine. Oh, yeah. not, that, not that they're going to know who, who I am. I'm just saying, I don't want my urine and my name Anywhere where the public could see it, right? I, 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 I couldn't agree more. Seeing my urine, like being able to hold up my urine, I may as well be standing buck naked, spread my ass cheeks for you. That's very personal. <laughs> By the way, side note, in certain circles, what do you think a cup of your piss could get on eBay, guy? <laughs> <laughs> some big, huge woman fan who wants to give herself a golden shower with some Maniscalco love? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, fuck up my recording. <laughs> yeah, so, no, I know what you're saying, though, man. I like, let's, let's, one piss at a time, let's get him out of there. Uh, we, we have a little drawer you open up at all, it's like a little, and you put them in there, and, and they get them. <laughs> yeah, no, this was, this was open for everybody to see. And no, no one was in the office, and I'm sure they went in right after to pick it up. But my question to you is yeah. if you saw, I don't know, I'm going to take it. If you saw, eh, if you saw my, if you saw my urine, yeah, in a cup, would 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 that uh, affect your feelings towards me in any way, shape, or form? Like, would, if you saw it, would you go? Really? If 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 it was anything other than like white water, you know, when you drink a lot of water and it's just pure yeah, yeah. clear, yeah, anything other yeah, yeah. than that, like if it was like dark yellow, I'd probably yeah, but, I'd, I'd call Jack, I'd call Jackie and be like, "This fucking guy's dying." <laughs> do I do I go to Jack? Do I tell him? I mean, holy shit! It was like his piss was like staring at the sun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, side note here, yeah, yeah. I've been told yeah. by my sister, actually, when you make me laugh yeah. and she's listening at, 
on audio, yeah. when I laugh, nothing comes out. Like I, I do this throw back in my, my mouth, but there's nothing that comes out. She goes, you gotta like, you gotta like have something audible for the people that are no. listening to it because they think it's like silence no, on the good. other end. No way, man. <laughs> they gotta get the video. That's what they gotta do. I mean, you know, yeah, I that's can't what I said. I mean. still doing audio. It's like Morse code. <laughs> Shit, right? <laughs> And then, what so, if your piss is cloudy? That's like, oh, uh, yeah, no, I'm, yeah. That's like, so you did it all. You did it all in one. You do it all in one spot, though. The blood, the like, you know, like we have to go from our doctors to a lab down the block to do the blood. You do it all in one shot. No, it's all there. All, all in right. one shot. Beautiful, so, beautiful. Nurse, nurse does does it all, and then the doctor calls me into his office, and we sit down on the couch and we discuss my health over the last year. You know, questions ra ranging from you've been drinking a lot, how's your back, uh, how's your diet, what kind of supplements you take, all that stuff. Yeah. Then, then he does a checkup on me. We go back into the room, eyes, ears. He does the, the 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 reflex on the knee, the little thing. Yeah. And then he then he does a testicle check, right? Right. He goes, I have to look at your testicles. And then uh, I throw out, oh, this is gonna be fun, you know? Ah, see, bro, see, you, 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 that's, you're making it uncomfortable, guy. You just gotta lean, you just gotta, you're a patient guy. You know, but I mean, I feel like, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like after you sit down with a man for 35 minutes and you're just shooting the shit about whatever, you know, health and COVID and you know, how's your family, this thing, the other thing. And then he goes, I got to I got to feel your balls. You know, you got to give it a segue. I, you know what I'm saying? I, I, you know, it's I disagree. It's almost like if you and him were talking about your Porsche, I know your Porsche, any car, and then you stepped in and he got under the hood. You would you you'd be loving it, man. And you're such a guy of health. I mean, any extra thing, grab the balls, do whatever you gotta do, do it all. I mean, you should be. That's your wheelhouse. You're walking out knowing, without a doubt. Well, he uh, he gets the right nut. You know, he gets up in there and he does the uh, the cough, you know, cough. So a cough, right? Yeah. And then he goes to the other one and then he says cough. So I cough. And he goes, cough again. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God. I never got the cough again, bro. <clears throat> now I'm thinking in my head first, what second, did he not have like a firm grip on what he wanted to be? You know, like, did, did was he there? And then he, I cough. He goes, ah, hold on, let me, let me get in there. Like I, I, I wasn't in on it. Right. Mm, no. or, or, or was did he, I cough? And in his hand goes, the fuck is that? I, cough again. Yeah, man. He's like <laughs> grabbing, going, cough. And he's about to pull away. He's like, was that, was that a tumor? Cough again. <laughs> you know? I, I mean, he just kept out the was that a tumor part for you, guy. Oh, my God. You know? That's what I want to hear. I want to hear. He had a bad grip on your ball. <laughs> yeah, way to be optimistic, bro. <laughs> <laughs> shave down there so he's not fighting through a little forest to get to the <laughs> testicle i don't i mean i probably should but i keep the 1970s guy <laughs> oh, we know, we know. You, you, you probably got it so fucking thick down there you can't see nuts dick nothing it's just a fucking it's, <laughs> it's all my feel all my feel put on some journey or some foreigner and let's go back to the 1970s all right <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, so, yeah, oh, you're probably God. giving them, like, a nice glisten, like, you know, <laughs> fucking snow-covered uh, smoothness down there, right? <laughs> oh, well, 
I, I think I uh, I cleaned it up down there about it had to be about two months ago. So it, you know, it's like it's I look at it as like a, a like grass. It 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 it's coming in nicely, right? It's like you know, it's 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 like it's not like a a baby's bottom, and it's not like yours. It's just right in between. It's like a good. Uh, you know, I, I compare it to uh, uh, the Dallas Cowboys field. Oh, right? It's just, right. Just, it's, just, it's in, it's in uh, you know, keeping with the rest of you, uh, the way you groom yourself. Yeah. 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 God forbid you are married, a woman went down there. She's not going to go, well, that's a twist. <laughs> you know, everywhere but there. I'm a big guy. <laughs> All right. Oh, what did this doctor find? We're on pins and needles here, bro. He goes, you got a hernia. Oh my God, how's that possible? You don't even do much lifting, right? No offense, but I mean. No, she, he goes, you have a small hernia, nothing to be concerned Oh wait, the, the lifting, bro. The, the weights. Could be. I asked him. First, the diagnosis is small hernia, nothing to be concerned about. Don't have to do surgery. Just want to let you know, small one there. Don't worry about it. So my next question was, it come from like straining, lifting. That's what I always used to hear, right? Could come from that. Also could come from straining to take a shit, he tells me. Wow. Like if you're constipated and you start you know, pushing, pushing hard on that shit, a little hernia could pop out of your left nut. So well, that's when I got it. Hernia? What, 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 what exactly is hernia? I, I, I think it's in, again... Pete and Sebastian show, don't take this. <laughs> I think it's a small, um, uh, it's like a ball. I think that cracks through or, or breaks through. It's something that breaks through something down down by your crotch area. I think. Okay. okay. So you don't know. Again, <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know. I thought it was a tear. It was it's not a, a tear. tear. A tear, but something's coming through the tear. I think. Oh, all right, all right. Yeah, so, maybe, maybe, yeah. I mean, my grandfather had a hernia, and it was so big you could hear it when he sat down. See, I don't know what this means. What, what does a hernia sound like? And was he in pain when he sat down? I don't know, but I remember asking my dad, I go, when grandpa sits down, you hear a, it's almost like a, dun, dun, like a, like two, it's like somebody's hitting a, a kettlebell. And I, I go, what the hell is that? He goes, that's his hernia. I go, if I'm hearing it, shouldn't that be removed? <laughs> <laughs> what, I mean, what is making the cowbells? That your balls are getting hard or something? I, I don't know. I got again. I got to look this up. This is new to me. This whole hernia thing. I got to look it up to see exactly what the hell it is. But that's what I got. Now, all right, because I have questions. But go ahead, man. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, first of all, when he says nothing to worry about. Just want to tell you, okay, if it's, it, 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 do I, is he expecting you to do anything different moving forward? No. Well, then why is he even telling you if there's nothing I'm going to do and not to worry about it and you're not going to have me change, then why, why are you even putting this on me? It'd be like someone telling you, you got a slight tear in your shoulder. Uh, just want to let, let you know that. And you go, okay, still play basketball? Yeah, no problem. Oh, 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 okay. So, so what do I do to make it not get worse, doctor? You know, I mean, I, I go to a mechanic and he goes, "Oh, your, your windshield is is uh, gonna fade pretty yeah. soon, break." So, yeah. oh, and it's then you come in when that happens. Well, is that the deal? It's so a like, crack in the window. So, what'll happen to you if, like, it gets worse? What is a hernia? What is a bigger case of a hernia mean? Like, what's I, I don't know. Once I heard nothing to worry about, I stop asking questions. Uh, I, hear you. Huh? I, hear you. All right. I shut it down. I don't want to put my. I don't want to put any more information in my head that I, that I need to. I, I now, probably have a hernia, bro. <laughs> well, have you got your balls checked within the last five, ten years? Uh, yeah, I get them checked all the time. I mean, once a year, I do. My guy, did you get the thing up the thing uh, the the finger? Thing, you know? No, no, none of that. Why, bro? No, wow. I think I just had that. Te- I just had that test. I get that every year too. Oh, you do? Yeah. You get your finger up the ass? 
Yeah. Well, maybe it's a thing when you turn 50. Uh, yeah, maybe 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 we have my 50th birthday. I'll still, I'm still, I start getting that once a year. Wow. I don't know. Man, damn. All right. So what, other than that, all good? Other than that, well, he's got the blood. The blood's got to come back. So he's like, I'll call you in two days with the results on the blood. I said, if I'm dying, just lead with that. Uh, I go, honest to God, if I'm dying, just know, hey, how's it going? Listen, I just on the phone. You got six weeks. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't want to fall right to it. Now, do you? I gotta ask you this, okay? I know you got a good doctor and all, but I always wonder if there's levels of physicals. Like when you get a car wash, you can get the ten or the eight or the twelve dollar one. Like, do you think when a new person becomes the president of the United States of America, does he get the same physical that you got? Or is he like there for two days straight with wires attached to him and everything else? Yeah, there's a thing called the executive physical where you go through a battery of tests uh, from head to toe, inside and out, that a lot of these CEOs and very high profile types definitely take. That's that's an option. You can do all that if you want. Well, bro, uh, why are you doing that? Well, we've done something similar where, you know, I'm prone to heart disease because of uh, my family's genetics. So we've taken, you know, a scan of the heart. We're going to do a stress test in a couple of months here to to test the heart out and uh, also go to your urologist uh, just to see if everything's okay uh, with all that. So there's... There, you know, there's other things you can do above and beyond than just a general physical where they do blood work and, you know, see if your vitals are working. So, yeah, th- there's that option definitely out there. I think in San Diego they got a really good one. It's a facility that actually does all this stuff. Um, but, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing something like that from full, full, full blown from head to toe. Yeah, well. Actually, actually, I know a guy that actually had this done. Thanks for reminding me. I, I actually might do that. Um, but anyway, that's out there. So I'm wait. I'm waiting on. Uh, I'm waiting on results, and I'm always on pins and needles with this stuff. You know. Because yeah, like, oh, but when you do the executive one, man, my God. Oh God. Be like every little thing that like, there's a fungus on the toenail. Uh, <laughs> there's a tear in your ass canal. I mean, uh, who knows what they're gonna say? Yeah, but, I mean, come on, we've all we've had that cast where we've had that. I mean, you know, blood in the toilet. Boom, even that. <laughs> so yeah, go for the executive. I'm sure the blood test will be fine. Knock wood. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um. What else? What, what do you got on your end? What are you doing over there? I'm doing over here, man. I'm mean, Joe. We finally got it's the best time of the year here, man. It's gorgeous. I got a couple. I got a couple. We had a parade, by the way, here and uh, a Memorial Day parade that we went to. Uh, I got to tell you, it was a little. Jo- the parade was great, but uh, they had a part, a part where old cars start coming down, and mm-hmm. bro, uh, a Dodge Dart, a station wagon. Jackie and I looked at each other like, we're at that age now where the old classic cars are what we, are what we had in our driveway. Wow. That's a, a, sta- a station wagon. You tell me, like, normally a car show, you got like old Corvettes, a Camaro, a station kind of wagon. Stuff, but it was a pristine one, like the Brady Bunch one in mint condition. So, you know, it was kind of like nostalgic, took everybody back. You bring up a good point, though, with these parades, though, because at one point a van came down. You know, they had the bands and they had uh, marching bands and they had uh, some local politicians, like the local mayor and stuff. But uh, at one point... Um, a van comes down and it's Meals on Wheels van. Just says Meals on Wheels. And I looked at Jackie. I'm like, well, well, what's coming next? Mike's plumbing? When does it? And, and, and there was some kids <laughs> marching that just go to a school next to ours. And Sadie's waving to them. And I'm like, oh, what are they? And Jackie's like, oh, nothing. Just they're marching with the school. What's up? Can anyone march in a parade? I mean, in these local parades? What- like. What the rule is on that? I, I wanna I wanna rewind a little bit and ask you, the mayor of a small town like Fredonia. Yeah, yeah. What, what's he making a year? Oh. Or, or, or does does he have another job that he like he's 
He's working at like the golf course. Like, is he doing anything to supplement his income, oh, or is that? Oh yeah, I think I think they pull in. I think I googled it once, and I want to say like maybe thirty, maybe you know, thirty grand to be the mayor. Yeah, because it was uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Keep it. What? Yeah, I know. I mean, no wonder these politicians are stealing. Well, that's why. I, listen, I thought about taking matters into my own hands and becoming the mayor here, which would be a landslide. But uh, you know, I don't want to get a phone call about a dispute with the fireman and the cops, and, uh, and they're like, "Where are you?" I'm like, "I'm, I'm in fucking St. Louis, guy. You pay me thirty grand a year. I got to run." <laughs> Shit. And by the way, I'm about to hit the stage. Just, yeah, I'll be home Monday. We'll talk it out. But, I mean, for 30 grand, did they expect you to be available and shit? I mean, I've been a mayor for no, I live in Montana. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, though, I get into it, man. I already see some people with the high grass where I live. They didn't mow it. Oh, man, I want to stop putting lettuce. I want to oh, start doing. How much trouble could you get in with the law? If I typed a letter and said, you know, like stuff like mow your lawn or get your car off the front lawn, um, um, just a warning before you get a fine, and I put Fredonia letterhead, town letterhead on it, uh, you know, I'd pop it uh, in. Yeah, I don't know what law you would be breaking. I think, you know, I'm sure it would be something, but can you? Can you on your own letterhead or some letterhead that you make up, you know, peace, like you, could, you could even call the company uh, PC um, uh, zoning. PC zoning and uh, we care about the neighborhood, something like yeah. that. Uh, this, is, this is your first warning to get the car off the lawn or we are going to take legal action. And then there's no number or nothing like that. Just a random letter, random letterhead. Just get the ball oh. moving on some of these things, man. You know, just a little, little tighten up here and there. Uh, no, I, was, I agree. But go ahead. I was going to say not to change the subject, but uh, speaking of letterhead, I have in my notes here. Um, last week on Antique Road Show, some lady from Chicago had an old letter that Sinatra wrote in like 1975. He played in Chicago <clears throat> and a local writer in Chicago in like the daily Chicago paper kind of ripped Sinatra saying that, you know, he, he took over the whole city. He took so many cops had to help him and secure him that other neighborhoods were left unsafe. The show wasn't good. And Sinatra wrote this guy a letter. And they only have parts of what he said in the letter. Like one thing was, I don't know how this is Sinatra writing back to the guy. I don't know how people don't spit in your in your face three or four times a day. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, the guy said that Sinatra has a hair piece, and Sinatra says in the letter, I'll, "I'll bet you. How about this? Let's meet up, and you can tug on my hair piece as hard as you can, and if it comes off." I'll give you $100,000. If it doesn't come off, I get to punch you in the face. That's what he writes in the letter. So, you know. But anyway, this lady got a hold of it. It's sold for 15 to 20K is what it's worth, and they're going to put it on auction. Oh, my God. Bro, you know? I mean, does Sinatra know that when he's writing it? Do you think he's like, oh, someone's going to get a call for this letter someday? I don't think so. I think he's just writing it, and he's sending it out. But... <laughs> What are we complaining about? If Sinatra needs extra security, the neighborhoods go unsafe. <laughs> Listen, man, if you want Sinatra to come, and I don't think he's calling for extra security. They're just saying, you know, we got to be around this guy. I don't know, man, but it's interesting. Even if he did, yeah. even if he said, I need extra squads coming into the, to the show, we start pulling them off detail. Sinatra needs extra backup. <laughs> I, I, don't know. I can't believe, though, seriously, that like a guy like Sinatra, right? I can't believe he doesn't read this in the, in the paper and just laugh it off like, you know, he grabs a pen or a typewriter and he takes the time and he, is that what it takes to stay on top? If that's, you know, you got to keep fighting the fight. Keep uh, fighting the fight. And, and 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 to get back to your uh, your parade thing, yeah, yeah. Can you just like 
let's say you're on a bike, right? Could you just like slip into the parade and ride the bike in between the float and the high school band? I operate, you can. I mean, yeah. I mean, they got people that just walk it with bags of candy and throw candy out to the kids. It was packed, man. USA is back, baby. As far as, uh, <laughs> you know, being patriotic, being out and, you know, tearing it up and uh, really, you know, because it was, we didn't have to pray for two years. So, and then, like, where we're standing, the roads are all side roads are blocked off. So, me, Sadie, and Jackie are standing like where a road would come, but it's blocked off. All of a sudden, the cop comes over, he moves the barrier, and a car pulls up and parks right there. And the cop goes, that's the Grand Marshal. And they're just waiting there, and they're going to scoot into the parade at the end. You know, and it's, I don't know, some old-time guy you don't know. And then the parade is over, and he's about to get be a part of the parade. And he's an old guy, so he gets out of the car, and he decides he's going to walk. And as he takes, like, two steps, someone in the car goes, it's too hot, get back in the car. And then when he goes to get back in the car, the person driving it didn't hear, and they keep going, and he almost falls on his ass. And it was like, oh, God, this is like... And then the guy, there's the Grand Marshal, and he's sitting with the window open, like, this far, with one arm out, waving, and you don't even know who it is, man. I, yeah, you got to get this guy on an open flatbed the, the, with a throne. That's it, but the Grand Grand Marshal is in a parade. It's never like Clooney, you know, or, or, or Mick Jagger, or it's always someone where you're going, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's never a name. No, or else it's a new guy who's going to be in a new sitcom that's going to be canceled by Christmas, but he's in the Thanksgiving Day Parade. You know, you ever see that kid? He's so excited. He's got his wife with him. You know? yeah. uh, anyway, so that was that. Uh, I have a thing. I don't know if we should save it for this show or, I, I, you know, I, maybe we should do it this show. I mean, instead of saving it so people don't think we're saving everything for Patreon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you got? I mean, unless you got some, I wanted to ask you. No, no, no. Thing. Okay. All right, bro. Thirty years, I keep this part short. It's becoming clear that uh, I don't know. I don't know if you do you consider yourself a fashion influencer or just a, someone who's into fashion. You yourself. We're not talking Lana. We're talking you. Because you me, you know, me, yeah. No, just uh, someone who likes likes nice clothes. Yeah. I'm not. Not. I'm not. I'm not an influencer. No. Okay. Well. And that's how I feel, too. You're not an influencer, but, you know, you definitely seem to know what to wear and when to wear it. And uh, I was telling Jackie the other day, I go, you know, I always get women's opinions. I go, I got to ask him. I made a list of I want you to share with all listeners, because remember, this is more than just an entertaining show, learning life lessons. Yeah. I want to walk the listeners through some various different forms of clothing and where you stand as a man when and where some of this stuff can be acceptable, all right? And I'd like to start, and the reason that got me inspired to do this was, um, I'm liking the tank tops again, man. And I'm, I'm feeling like on a nice sunny day, I'd like to purchase a tank top. And I wanted to ask you, is there ever a time appropriate for a man to wear a tank top? And, uh, or, or is that completely out at all times? Well, you're talking to a, the tank top king of Arlington Heights, Illinois, circa 1989. Oh, that's that's but that's what scares me, bro. It's like not 1989 anymore, and you know I've seen old photos of you. Where you like you could have been in Sha Na Na. <laughs> <laughs> So I try to break the tank top look back out. This was 10 years ago. I bought a tank top and I came out of the bedroom. I remember Lana was in the kitchen and she goes, what are you wearing? I said, this is it's a tank top. Also, also known as a guinea tea. Hey. Okay. Were you going Italian tea? Were you going like just a, a, a Hanes tank top? It was a Hanes tank top. It looked like uh, the the half of a gymnastic leotard. You know, it was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It had the little, you know, the little uh, straps here. 
Right. It, was, it, it wasn't a long dip. This had just like a little, like almost a handbag. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and tight, tight and ribbed. Oh, no, that's not what I'm asking, man. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm talking about like Mark Harmon and uh, Summer Rental where he's got this, the, old, you know, the 1970s tank top. It's long, straight down. You know, regular length on the sides. Something yeah. you could have at brunch with a pair of flip flops and shorts. No? No. Nah. No, that, that that look is way, 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 way gone, man. You what can't did, be walking what was around. Lana's with it. Because your armpits are showing? She's like, it just, it looks. I don't know what the hell. What she, I uh, should get her up here and ask her. What she thinks about a tank top. We might have to get her up here. But this is just what I'm for- saying. We're letting women influence us. And if you saw BP in a tank top at the Ivory, having a, uh, whatever it's called, the Ivy, having a, having a cocktail, all of a sudden, people are going to do tanks again. And I'm saying, it's time to not just love clothes. It might be time to influence, guy. No need to get drama. Guy, if BP is having a... A drink at the Ivy and a tank top. Someone who is in the fashion community told him this is in and this is what you're going to wear. I don't think BP goes in, gets one of those, uh, I don't know. I I equate the the tank top you're talking about to like vacation merch. Where you go to SeaWorld and you get that and it's got a whale on it. Picture that without the whale. That's what I want to break out these days again. But you're absolutely right. That kind of longer tank top, you know what I'm saying? You know, you're know, not trying to go skin tight. All right, I guess. So it's what, really. That, oh, yeah. What? The tank top you're talking about, you need, in order to pull that off, you need separation between your chest you need like a a, a a canyon between your two packs right yeah. you need to be built out for that in order for that to even be acceptable uh, but uh, yeah it needs to dangle after the pecs like a curtain before a show yeah it know? needs to yeah. it needs to come off the nipples with some like there's no way the bottom of the tank could be even touching your abs because your tits are so big. Uh, yeah, I listen. You, you, you're literally making me think of Tommy C. Tom Selleck. I mean, Tom Selleck. I think Tom Cruise in uh, Magnum PI. And I'm outside today. It, it's 82 degrees. I'm in my driveway messing around, and a tank top just seems to make sense. Magnum pulled them off. I know it was Hawaii, but all right, we're not doing the tank. No. All no, right. I, well, here we go. My next one is there's these two guys we watch sometimes. I don't know their name on one of these HGTV shows. They're a married gay couple. And sometimes I think they're more into like how they look than the renovations because every scene, they're like right out of a magazine. They're two very handsome guys. But the one guy was wearing the other day a fedora, right? The like Sinatra hat. <clears throat> And it was like ridiculous because it was like, I've seen this guy show a bunch of times. He don't wear hats, right? So now he's wearing a hat because he thinks the hat goes with whatever shirt or whatever he's wearing. And, you know, then the other guy's wearing like an Amish hat the next episode, like this round thing. My point is, what's your take on hats as far as, uh, if you're a hat person, do you have to consistently wear the hat? Or can you just wear a hat like once a month because, oh, I like to wear the hat because it goes with the shirt. That, that, that seems a little odd to me. And second part, baseball cap. If it looks good on you and it's a good looking baseball cap, again, is that something you could wear at an upscale restaurant outside for brunch? Baseball cap. Uh, Well, let's take uh, the first question with the... Uh... If you don't wear a hat and you pop one on periodically, yeah, a little bouncy. To me, it's not yeah, not a right, not a right look. If you're a hat guy, and you know you wear a hat one time I see you, the next time I see you, you don't have the hat, and it's like it's like fifty percent of the time you got it on. And in order to pull a hat off, you have to have the right head for it. 
A lot of people try to pull a hat. I'm not a hat guy. I can't pull it off. I wear a hat. It just it doesn't work well with my face. Sinatra's got the perfect head, in my opinion, for for a hat. I mean, you can't go wrong with a Sinatra hat. Uh, a baseball cap, which I think has replaced the fedora. Yeah. Oh, shit. Shit. <laughs> shit. Yeah. Oh, man. I spilled my coffee. <laughs> you want to wipe right. it off? Yeah. No, I got it. I got it right there. I got a napkin. All right, go ahead. Uh, a baseball cap, I think, has replaced the fedora. Yeah. And again, I see guys in a baseball hat, and I'm like, man, that's a cool look. Me, can't pull it off. I wore a baseball hat to Vegas this weekend, and I I looked like a boy. A boy. Really? Really? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't. It's 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 a, a baseball cap. I got to get the right one, and the one that looks right on me is usually so tight that after like an hour, I, I can't take it anymore, man. Yeah. But I agree. I think someone who's a hat person doesn't have to wear the same hat every time I see him, but they got to be wearing a hat like, you know, a little more than half the time. I mean, if you come out, all of a sudden you're wearing a hat. It better be your new thing or take it off. That's my take, too. Yeah, no, that's my take, too. I mean, I couldn't show up at your house wearing a fedora. You'd be like, what's this? You know, it, it just don't this don't even go in with the rest of your clothing. Yeah, no, I, 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 it's too much. Now, where do we stand with sandals, guy? Because it's getting hot. They're very popular. Men like sandals. We give it a hard time. But is there any time a man, if he keeps his feet, generally speaking, groomed, can you go out and wear sandals to dinner in the summertime? In my opinion, you're either wearing shoes or you're not. Right? So... I'll give you an example. Let's go back to Vegas this weekend. Came down to the pool, not in a sandal. It was like a shoe, but highly ventilated. Almost had little holes in the shoe. It was just, it was like a mesh shoe I wore. Okay. And then out to the pool, took them off. Now I'm barefoot. No reason a sandal should even be incorporated into your wardrobe Unless you're Matthew McConaughey or Brad Pitt. This is interesting. I think it's so you're saying, you're saying when you get to the pool or beach where you're going, then you, like you would any other shoe, you take your shoe off and you enjoy your day barefoot. Mm-hmm. And then when you're going to leave and go back to wherever you came from, cover that shit up and yep. then go back. There's no need for a sandal because there's no in between. That's that's very interesting. So you're against the rubber flip flops just to come down from oh. the power. Uh, so much against the rubber flip flop. And I'll take it a step further. You ever see the rubber flip flop and on the on the bottom, a can opener? No, I haven't, man. Wow. You haven't seen the can opener incorporated into the flip-flop? No, that's unbelievable, man. That just shows you who who their target audience is. Wow. I mean, wow. They, they, look, they're basically saying if you're wearing flip-flops, you're probably drinking beer. So, or guess. you're probably... Oh, you're probably white trash. Yeah, well, uh, all right. See, now you, I got like, I wear flip-flops. I'm going on vacation this summer. I don't know. I got to get this ventilated shoe. Uh, again, though, it, it's a whole thing, though, with the flip-flop. Me, myself, I can't pull off the flip-flop. I don't have the feet for it. I have short. I got a small foot, and I got a short toe to foot ratio, all right? Oh, all right, yeah, so, yeah. So, so what that means is if, if you throw a, a, a flip-flop where that piece goes in between your big toe and the second toe, yeah, yeah. my toes don't accentuate the sandal. It's almost like it draws attention to the foot, and I feel... 
a sandal on the right foot is seamless. It almost looks barefoot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. See, that's interesting. I can see what you're saying. People look at yours and they almost think, you is he crunching his toes in? Where's the rest of the toe? Right? Yeah. 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 What, what, did he, what did he step on a landmine? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, I got long toes and the middle toe. It's like it's in the, it's disproportionately longer than the rest. Like it really makes oh. a run for the hills. You know what I'm saying? So, like, uh, so your your foot is, is 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 flicking is flicking someone off. No. Oh yeah, yeah, big time. Oh, I mean, you got, no, you can't, you can't wear a sandal now, bro. My 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 middle toe is always like just looking down over the edge of the flip flop. You know? Oh like, no. Like, you know, it's like, it's like the scallop leading the rest of the toes, letting them know what's ahead, man. But it does a nice wrap around between the thumb and the second toe, like you say, it does a nice wrap around. <laughs> now, bro, this is concerning me, and I've seen this in some nicer, trendier neighborhoods uh, on the road and stuff. I'm noticing an uptick in people wearing men uh, socks with sandals like with Birkenstocks and stuff and I'm not talking dirty white socks like that dad going to the mailbox I'm talking like the socks are nice the bur the, the sandals clean and they're almost seeing it as like a combined shoe you know what I'm saying I got I don't know how I feel about this look it's gaining steam uptick guy yeah it ain't gaining steam within the Italian community I'll tell you that I ain't into socks, half sandal, full sandal, whatever you got going, I don't believe a sock should even be seen unless a man has a tuxedo on and decides to cross his feet or his legs and you see the sock just because the, 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 the pant leg went up a little bit. I don't think a sock should be a showpiece. Well, we get into a couple that, first of all, though, have you ever... A little guilty pleasure, just try putting a sock on and sliding it into a sandal. Oh, wow. There's a reason people are doing it, guy. It's like laying in a goose down blanket naked, man. Oh, it's just nice. Never oh, felt that wait. feel? Well, not a sandal. Like, like a, a sandal, like a, like a Birkenstock. What is a Birkenstock? Oh my God, bro, you're so uh, metrosexual, man. No, I'm so Italian. <laughs> <laughs> your dad, yeah, it's true. I doubt, you, maybe your dad has a version of a Birkenstock. It's like that sandal. I know you've seen it. It's got popular in Vermont. It's 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 got the two belt buckles. Uh, oh, the 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 Jesus sandal. Yeah, like that. And when yeah. you're sitting at you, you standing at your foot, eventually conforms to the to the sole of it. I got a picture of me in those on spring break. In 1992, wow. bro, I got to show you this photo, oh, and wow. you'll have a complete different opinion of, about me. It was probably one of the worst looks I've ever tried out. Really, man? I can't even picture you in a pair of those things, man. Yeah, They're very, yeah. like, Bernie Sanders and, you know, Vermont. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. Why, you got them? No, I used to have them too, but you know, I got the hobby that goes with it. I mean, I can't imagine you in it. Yeah, they don't go good with a half shirt that says Italians <laughs> rule. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, made, what, made in Italy. <laughs> made in Italy. <laughs> Um, well, what about you bringing up a side note here when I'm wearing like now I'm wearing shorts, which people can't see and I got socks. So your sock, you don't mind a sock with a sneaker when you're wearing shorts, right? No, that's 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 a great look. Oh, OK. That's what you got to do. Now, brings me to another one, bro. And maybe we'll wrap up with this one for this time. As far as uh, the fashion aspect of the show. Um Went to Sadie's recital the other day. I have my shades on, which I really like. Kept them on when we went in. It's like an old library. And it was bright in there, but still, it's indoors. And after like five minutes, Jackie looks over at me and goes, why are you still wearing your sunglasses? And I'm like, you know, I, I, Tommy C's been doing it in a lot of movies lately. But I'm like, I wanted to maybe 
making my look a little bit. I like the look, keeping shades on and stuff. That's Jack Nicholson, but you know, if I'm only gonna be in a place for a little while, I may take them off. I look, and she just said I look like an idiot. What's your take on a man keeping his shades on indoors? You know, is it appropriate? Yeah. Other than a funeral, I know that's got its own set of rules. I got a couple things on this. Uh, my opinion, it's cultural. And I feel black men could pull this look off and not even be looked at as far as trying to pull something off that they're not um, capable right, right. of. Shades and doors, you saying? I had a, I, yeah, I had a black guy come to my show, had shades on in the audience watching me, right? And this guy couldn't look any cooler. Yeah. The only white guys I think that could pull this look off. Mm -hmm. Actually, there's only one. There's only one. And it was actually captured on film. Right? Mm -hmm. Stallone at the mausoleum bearing Mickey Rocky Three. Shades on, indoors. I haven't seen it since. Well, I know he did look really cool, but that's because he's a star. So I feel like, you know, that's 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 the asking that's answering my question. Do you, do you have to be an iconic, huge star like him or Jack Nicholson to wear shades in, indoors and not look ridiculous? Well, I've tried what you just tried. As a white uh, person, because like, I agree. I mean, I've seen a lot of black guys pull it off. They look, I mean, yeah. Wesley Snipes looks fucking so cool oh, when he wears shades and dodge back. He probably sleeps with glasses on, that guy. I, I, I don't even know if he sleeps, man. He just seems <laughs> fucking too much. He just like, I think he's a black belt, bro. I mean, the guy's like lived like six lives. Oh, yeah. I've tried this move myself where I walk into an establishment, could be a mall, it could be, uh, uh, you know, a casino, whatever. And if I leave my glasses on four seconds while indoors, Lana will turn to me and go, get those glasses off. We're inside. See, this is what I'm saying, bro. We're letting women influence our look and we should take back the reins. I mean, I I do that too. I like I I'll go in and I'm walking. Same thing. I like to do that when I'm in like a mall. So I'll take them off. But I'll take them off after a couple of you know ten twelve yards. I, and I feel like I'm taking them off because eventually Jackie's gonna say that to me. And I don't know. Can you see? What about? Like Jack Nicholson shades. Do you know, like, I don't know much about shades. Are there special shades that when you're outside, they block the sun, and when you're inside, they make it crystal clear, but people don't, you know, still can't see your eyes? So I tried doing this move, I'd say, about 15 years ago. I went back to Chicago, and I remember I, I bought a pair of Christian Dior sunglasses, but they weren't sunglasses. They had a light tint. It's like a, just a light tint. So at night, you could barely see my eyes, barely see them through the tent. Yeah. And I, I wore them to meet my sister out. I was coming out with my friends. She was coming out with her friends. I met her at a bar, and I walked into the bar at night with these things on, right? <laughs> and, and my sister's like, what are you doing? I go, what, what do you mean what am I doing? She goes, why Why do you got sunglasses on? I go, these aren't sunglasses. It's a light pin. Right? She's, she's like, take them off. You look ridiculous. So I've tried this. I've tried it. It's just, it doesn't right. stick. Right, right. Oh, my God. I can see you making that move, man. I can see it. I, but it's it always seems to me that it's the women shutting down the shades indoors. Man, women know best, bro. Women know best. I suppose. Especially so. when it comes to fashion. Um, all right, bro. I got to jet out of here. Um, I got my... Uh, Alana. Yeah. Seraphina's got a recital tonight. She's uh, she's doing Into the Woods, so she's acting tonight. Oh, so we got to go pick, pick her up and uh, and get her ready for this. But uh, all right, bro, like good to, hanging. Like to thank everybody on the Pete and Sebastian show for listening. 
Again, we are on Patreon. Check us out there. A lot of fun and exciting things going on over there. But we will see you guys next week. Bye.